I'm George Norrie. Welcome to Coast to Coast AM. Next hour, hit list, an investigation into the JFK assassination and some other tremendous stories with actor Richard Belzer. Make sure you're part of that. Stand by for that on Coast to Coast AM. November 22nd, 1963. I was just a little boy, 13 years old. I remember my English teacher, Miss Leonard, coming in, crying, sobbing, because she saw this. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Vice President Lyndon Johnson has left the hospital in uh, Dallas, but we do not know uh, to where he has proceeded. Uh, Presumably, he will be taking the oath of office shortly and become uh, the 36th president of the United States. It's the first time Walter Cronkite ever really teared up while he was on the air. You know, we've never been the same since, have we? In a moment, Richard Belzer joins us. His latest work, Hit List, an in-depth investigation into the mysterious deaths of the witnesses to the JFK assassination. Richard's with us next. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. I'm George Norrie, now our special guest tonight. He's been with me before when we talked about his book, Dead Wrong, Straight Facts on the Country's Most Controversial Cover-Ups. He, of course, is an actor, author, stand-up comedian as well, currently on the cast, best known as John Munch on the NBC show Law & Order Special Victims Unit. And he has written such books as UFOs, Elvis, we're going to talk about JFK, and so much more. Welcome back, Rick, Rick, Richard Belzer. Richard, I, always. I, this is a thrill for me. I'm I'm not uh, in awe of many people, but you're one of my heroes, and here I am in the studio with you. So I'm like a kid in a candy store. This is a subject. <laughs> no, this show I've been listening to for years. My daughter and son-in-law listened to it, and we're total coast-to-coast freaks with a, in, a, in a good way, you know. And uh, we've learned a lot from this show. And uh, uh-huh. freelance, freelance writer. The old newsman. Yeah. Real, uh, you know, Bridgeport Post, uh, eight-column old-school newspaper. I was a court reporter and uh, started out writing obituaries, which is when <laughs> uh, – that's where every reporter starts on a newspaper. In the old days, everyone starts in the obituaries, and then you move up. That's right. So I became a court reporter, and then I went to another paper, and I was allowed to write some editorials. I um, – ever. I ever since I was as as long as I can remember, I always was suspicious and questioned authority from my parents to teachers to there was just something in me that always was like questioning things and it cost me a lot. I got thrown out of every school I ever went to. Did I you was, really? Yeah, because I was I, I for some reason I knew I don't know how to verbalize this, but I just knew the, uh, that the grown-ups, in quotes, didn't really know everything. And I could sense when they were, you know, just patronizing, make, making stuff up. Like I remember when I was very little, my mother would be driving around with one of her sisters and they would be gossiping and saying something about someone. And they, they would say something awful and then they look at each other and look down at me and then they keep talking like, oh, he's not. But I, I remember everything, everything, you know, yeah. I have an amazing memory and I and I really learned very early on not to trust authority. I don't know why. But then when President Kennedy was was mur- was head exploded in broad daylight, we all, you know, that was the day things started to go wrong, as the journalist said that day. And we were all were in shock. Then they, the guy who allegedly killed him, he shot while in police custody. So for three days, there was this incredible, massive mind control of the whole country. We're all in grief. We're all vulnerable. We all thought this one guy did it, you know, and then he gets shot. And then and the guy who shot him dies. Gets fast acting cancer. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't think about conspiracies in, in, in the 60s, in the early 60s. But then... When the when the Vietnam War was like heating up, and when when Dr. King spoke out against the Vietnam War, that's when they murdered him. That's what is that was the straw. I mean, they mm-hmm. hated him. They they blackmailed him. They, you know, the other attempts were right. made. But here's a Nobel Peace Prize winner saying, why should, you know, people who can't 
you know, eat or get on a bus, go and die. You know, I'm paraphrasing brutally. But so that kind of made, and then Bobby Kennedy was killed like two months later. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, and then here's what really turned me on to the whole world of conspiracies deeply is when Watergate happened, I saw some of the same names that were involved in the Bay of Pigs. Yes. And, and that was the big light bulb in my head exactly. that presidents are part-time workers. We live in a permanent national security state. And uh, we got to look at things totally differently now. And then, of course, I ran Contra. Even some of the same people involved in the Bay of Pigs were involved in Iran Contra. Mm -hmm. So there's this thread that I was very intrigued by. I'm a big Holmes uh, Conan Doyle guy. I'm a big film noir guy. And I'm very much into war, history of World War II and what happened from then on. And uh, so, you know, I, I as I get older, you know, I'm even more uh, – and people say, you know, like – I think everything is a conspiracy until you prove it isn't rather than the other way around. Right. Why can't we trust right now, Richard? Well, you know, it's it's interesting because I was being interviewed for the book and people are asking me about Boston and, and saying, you know, some people are saying the government did it, you know, re, just reflexively. Yeah. Now, the, whether the government did it or not is not the point. I mean, it is the point. But the point is that. If we're th if people are thinking that, not stupid people, smart people, smart people are saying, wait a minute, we were lied to about Iran Contra, we were lied to about this, we were lied to, we we're lied into two wars, Iraq, we were lied into that. I mean, we've been lied to, Vietnam, lied to. We were lied to. Vietnam was a lie. Americans are basically isolationists; they don't want to be in war. We were lied into World War One. We invented. This is interesting because it, it mirrors how we got into. Uh, the uh, first uh, war in the Middle East when we went into Kuwait and all that mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the propaganda in World War I was that the Germans are, uh, the Huns are bayoneting Belgian babies. And there's a political cartoon right. uh, with a spiked helmet and a, and a German I soldier. World War I. World War I. So to get us right, because we didn't want to be in World War I. So they had to do, so then for, and when Kuwait happened, we had a girl come on and testify before Congress how Hussein's people took the babies from the incubators and let them die on the cold floor. She was a diplomat's daughter Never who happened. was coached by an acting teacher That's right. to cry in front of the. So then we went. Americans are very open hearted, compassionate people. We don't want to go to war. We, you know, but we are tricked. Gulf of Tonkin, the Korean War. I mean, you name it. There's the only justifiable war, obviously, was World War Two. And what's interesting about that is, and we can get into this, is that Hitler never declared, I mean, we never declared war on Germany. They, Hitler was in Paris in 1940. We still didn't right. declare war. I, I have nightmares about how long we would have waited if he didn't declare war on us. And, and in Do a, you know what I mean? And in a bizarre way. Supported by many U.S. corporations. More, not bizarre, factually and, proven. And... Alan Dulles, who went on to head up the CIA, should be hung for treason. Was was helping the Nazis. Dulles brothers throughout the 1930s in Switzerland figured out how to help American and English bankers get money into Germany. The reason we had a depression in this country is because Teddy Roosevelt was was a was against these big businesses mm -hmm. and was a you know trust buster and you know he was for the little guy and. So when he went after them, the the Harrimans, the Rockefellers, Joe Kennedy, the DuPonts, uh, Bush, Prescott Bush, all the rich families in America started investing in Germany. Yes, you're because right. Because they did, they they you could have cartels there and all this stuff. So they they caused our depression. And then you know Hitler, they loved Hitler. He came in. But then he was the dog on the chain who pulled away and confiscated, you know, all the banks. So uh, we had to go he, to war with Hitler. Out. That's right. But when President Roosevelt, FDR, not Teddy, of course, he wanted the German bankers to go on trial at Nuremberg for financing the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And the German bankers said before they went on trial, we're just doing what American bankers told us to do. Yeah. So they yeah. didn't they weren't put on trial. And Dulles, through the Vatican... Through the, Sorry that's to right. say, that's true. gave yeah. Nazi war criminals new identities and smuggled them into this country. In fact, our early CIA guys were trying to catch Nazis. 
Alan Dulles is over in the State Department hiding the very so you know people say you can't you know wasn't that one of the reasons oh Kennedy wanted him out of the CIA? Kennedy fired him he bounced him didn't because he? yes because they lied Kennedy learned that the CIA had gone beyond its charter and were starting wars not just doing right. spying and covert stuff Vietnam was a CIA thing Bay of, they lied to him about uh, he didn't. They, they said, didn't even tell him about the Bay of Pigs until it was too late. Well, it was an Eisenhower-Nixon thing. No one thought Kennedy was going to win. The, as soon as Nixon won, they were going to go in and, and, finish, the and job. finish the job. So Kennedy wins, and now they have to lie. They had to – they lied to him. The, some of the Joint Chiefs and the CIA told John Kennedy that if we go in there, the Cuban people will rise up, and, and but we need this certain air cover. So Kennedy said, look – the Cubans have 10 airplanes in their Air Force. If you disable those planes, then, you know, I'll, I'll you know, we'll do something, mm-hmm. right? So they got, oh, for some reason that day, two of their planes were in Chile. They, they We destroyed eight of their planes, but they still had two left. Now, here's what's fishy about it. The landing site of the rebels or whatever you want, and the CIA mercenaries that were going to go there, they were supposed to rendezvous in a, uh, in a mountain range, but the landing site was impossibly far away. This was a setup oh, from to the mug Kennedy. They they tried to blow up a Russian ship to embarrass Kennedy. And so that's when he realized that he was lying. He took full responsibility, didn't which it, no president does. Richard, didn't they also— And he also, fired Dulles. Right. But didn't, he, they, didn't they also put Cubans who were going to fight against Castro on a ship— that had an engine that wasn't working right. I mean, the whole thing was was well. They, the up. two ships that they used, uh, the the operation was called Operation Zapata. The two ships were called the Barbara and the Houston. Okay, George Bush owns an oil company named Zapata Oil. He named his two tankers after his wife Barbara and Houston, Texas, where the company's from. <laughs> so he lent us. His ships for this covert operation to invade Cuba, but it was really a way to trick Kennedy into a war because the mob, the Cuban exiles and the right wing and the military industrial complex that Eisenhower wanted us, warned us about loved Cuba. They were running guns through there, running drugs. It was a bait. You and know, the mob loved Cuba. The mob, you know, so it's like uh, Kennedy realized, whoa. He took responsibility, said, I'm going to split, uh, scatter the CIA into a thousand pieces. And that's, according to Fletcher Prouty, was the beginning of when they said, this guy has He's got, got to, go. to go. Yeah, I, I think you're But there's a hundred other things. They, they just, everybody just jumped on the bandwagon. I mean, there were so many groups. People say to me, who killed Kennedy? I say, who didn't kill him? Who didn't? The kill oil him, yeah. people hate him. The bankers hated him. The Cuban exiles. The CIA hated CIA him. CIA elements. See, it wasn't the government. As an institution that killed him, it was elements within the government. Within. But then people in the government had to cover it up because they were at the height of the Cold War. We didn't want the Russians to think we're a banana republic. So it gets really messy because people to this day are sticking to the story. But there's no reason to not find out what happened anymore because there's no national security issue. All the plotters are dead. A couple of the shooters are still alive. Two of them mm-hmm. are in jail. And... You know, it's an insult to the American people that our kids go to school and in the history books it says John Kennedy was killed by Lee Harvey Oswald. And then they go on to the next subject. It's a ghostly part of our history that we as we as citizens have a right to know. They exploded our president's head in broad daylight. I mean, a man died that day. We forget about. We lose all that. Well, in I was 13. How old were you? I was happened? in college. I was 18, I think, or 19. All right. And why is it, Richard, that we knew at our age? That there was something wrong here. Not right away. I did. You did. Well, that's good for you. Uh, I did. There was. I, I, I just felt that I didn't. this guy couldn't get all those shots off with that kind of a rifle. I was 13 years well, old. Well, good for you. That's and, very and, and astute. He, and, and when he said on camera, I'm a patsy. That should have been, you know, most people will kill a famous person and then brag and do it for the fame. And, and even books are written about, well, Oswald did it. But he kept denying it. Yeah. You, you know, well. Getting into all that, I mean, obviously, there were at least two Oswalds. One of them was very smart, and the other one was kind of the patsy guy, or I don't know if they killed the smart one, or. but we know for a fact now. This is why I'm excited about my book, uh, Hit List, because if anyone doubts there ever was a conspiracy, 
uh, my book with my partner David Wayne is a history book. It's not a conspiracy book. It's a history book that lays out factually uh, these these deaths and these so-called suicides and murders and shows you what what happened, the official verdict, the circumstances, the inconsistencies were heavily footnoted. And some researchers have got it up to 300 people died or in around it. Amazing. But we wanted to be very responsible. Mm-hmm. We got it down to 50, which is a huge number. And if there's no conspiracy, why are people being murdered just before they're going to testify? Why are people who are going to write about it? Yeah dead they were dying almost from the get-go well they they kept you know anytime there was an investigation people would drop like flies in the 70s there was the assassination uh the house committee on assassination uh and uh johnny uh, roselli sam giancana sam giancana was under house arrest being guarded and he was going to testify the next day he was shot in the back and then five times around his mouth under police Protection. Yeah. Johnny Roselli was going to testify. He was found chopped up in a barrel floating off the bay in Key Biscayne. In and, and these guys knew something. Well, no. Johnny Roselli, we now know, was hired by William Harvey from our government to put together a, a plot to kill Castro. That's in mainstream, mm-hmm. not maybe in every mainstream, but that's common knowledge, that we recruited the mob to help us kill Castro. Isn't it amazing Castro is still out there? He's the well, only one left? For, uh, you know, it's so ridiculous, the whole thing, because we have a Marine base in Guantanamo, like Cuba's a threat. It's, 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 it's weird. I we contained you. the Soviet Union for 60 years. The mistake and Castro have, made, Richard, was he went communist too quickly. Well, you know why? That he, was his But mistake. you know why he went communist? He There was a moment after the revolution where he was up for grabs. We could have right. romanced him and taken care of him and nurtured him. He came to the United States before any communist thing and he they they the Waldorf Astoria would not give him a room. Wow, I didn't know that. He was turned away. His whole all his people, you know, the diplomatic yeah. thing. So what does he do? He goes up to Harlem, gets a hotel room, and sets up shop there. No American diplomats or anybody welcome, came nothing. to visit him. Who did? Khrushchev. The, Khrushchev. the Russians went and said, look, we'll pay your, you know, we could have had him and we treated him like garbage. We did the same thing to Ho Chi Minh. You know? That's the most heartbreaking thing. Ho Chi Minh wrote seven letters to our government. He thought that we would identify with him trying to break the yoke of the colonialism the way we did with England. Mm -hmm. North Vietnam was a small country. He was worried that Ho Chi Minh was a great uh, thinker, poet, really an amazing guy. And he felt that Americans wouldn't even notice little Vietnam. Hold on for a second, Richard. We're going to hit this break. We're going to come right back. Richard Belzer with us. Hit list. We'll get into that, too, on Coast to Coast AM. Richard, by the way, ever get to Denver? Yeah, I love Denver. I did a a uh, plant medicine conference there. We have to fly you to our TV show. It's called Beyond Belief, right? And we tape for them once a month. Oh, cool! So we can plan the right weekend with you. Maybe I would love to do get it. you up there. Okay, I'll, I'll we, do it on my fun. way out here. And if you want to watch the program, it is free for ten days. Just go to our website, click hosts, and the TV button opens up. And take advantage of that and all the other videos. You can watch us beyond belief. The show airs Friday, 7 o'clock Eastern time. But because it's Internet-based, you can watch it whenever, whenever you, you want. want. Whenever yeah, it's you great. Want. It's great. And we'll be back with Richard Belzer in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. Richard, why can't we just openly trust government? Why are we so suspicious of everything. I mean, you love America. Yes, I love America. Yes, yes, that's what's so heartbreaking. Why can't we trust? Well, uh, because um, particularly in the last, let's say, I, here's what I think. I think it started with Richard Nixon in a way because up until then, no one ever heard a president swear. No one mm-hmm. you know, ever thought a president would order people to break in. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like, wait a minute. You know, Americans... Though they probably did, but what? we never heard tapes like that before. No, I think you'd be surprised. How I remember this very well. How many people... I was shocked that people were shocked that the president swore. Yeah. It was like... But then when they heard him say Jew and the N-word... Right. You know, that right. really was chilling. 
And then they realized that, you know, he he was bombing uh, Cambodia illegally. I mean, he lied about Vietnam. He kept us there longer. He had a secret plan, which was a lie. And it cost our kids that go went over there. He's he's a murderer. But, he's but, a war criminal. But I think they distrusted even before that. No, but, well, it started with, if you want to start, you start with prohibition. That really, yeah. okay. uh, the collective consciousness of the country, you know, a, a handful of zealots, sound familiar, imposed their will on the rest of the country. Most people didn't want prohibition, but they got it passed. You know what I mean? Most people want background checks, but right. we can't get them. And those who didn't want so, it made money on it anyway, right? Uh, Yes, and the thing is, you say, why do people first think of the government? A lot of people don't. They don't feel they can have an effect. When George Bush won his the uh, senior, he got like twenty eight percent of the vote because fifty percent or forty eight percent of the people didn't vote. So he won the majority of he won the majority the of those. So who it was voted. really it was one out of four people voted for him. Right. right. So I mean, people they see you know Vietnam, they see. Watergate, they see, you know, and then other things keep going on. They see people shot, shot, you do, know. Do they think about the Kennedy assassination? Well, I think that started it because uh, at first everyone we wanted to trust the government. And, you know, as I say, they were grief stricken mm-hmm. and, and in shock. But then, you know, the uh, Jim Garrison trial came along and kind of reawakened people. His staff was infiltrated by nine CIA agents. Every wow. witness he wanted was either thrown out of town or murdered. How close was Garrison? To Garrison to the was on to something, um, but he was so vilified and so, I mean, it was amazing what they... The, what they did to that guy, but he he definitely was onto something. You know, for instance, he said that Clay Shaw was using the alias of Clay Bertrand, mm-hmm. who called a lawyer to represent Oswald. Well, it was Clay Shaw. He also said Clay Shaw was in the CIA, which wasn't allowed. But we find out Clay he Shaw not only was he 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 was in the OSS, which was pre to the CIA. He was one of the guys that was debriefing Nazis. He you know Whoa. Clay Shaw. Yeah. So and he was also involved in Permindex, which was a very shady corporation that was thrown out of Switzerland even and was a front for some extreme right wing or so I mean Clay Shaw was up to this. I mean David Ferry was murdered just before he was going to testify. Some people think he flew some of the shooters out. Um the woman that Ferry was working with, a doctor, they were working on some strangest Stuff, fast acting cancer and hypno. I mean, Ferry was a really bizarre character. Lee Harvey Oswald was in the Civil Patrol, which is like the Boy Scouts. And they was, knew him. Didn't Ferry, they? there's pictures of Ferry and Oswald, and Oswald was 14. Yeah. So, you know, it gets. So, um, aside from the Kennedy assassination, people are just keep seeing things going on. And then, of course, the savings and loans scandal, where, you know, that was reverse bank robbery. Remember that? I remember where they that. got off. They stole all right. this money, and people go, wait a minute. And then, you know, recently we had this meltdown. People were like, wait a minute, foreign banks own my house? It's like it's just it's incremental, drip by drip, death by a thousand tiny cuts. So the average person in the street who doesn't read 20 newspapers a day is isn't on the Internet like, you know, we're researchers and we do that. The average person is worried about, you know, the rent, the family, the kids or whatever. Sure. They don't have time. But now it's just so overwhelming that the government – lies us into wars. They don't tell us really what's in the atmosphere. They don't, you know what I mean? It's like, whoa. So even the average person now is getting stressed well, now, out. Now, let me ask you, why? Why can't they just tell us the truth? Well, they're, because it's not in their interest. It's in their interest to to uh, sow within us a little bit of insecurity. Fear. Uh, fear, but... It's also we they want us to be worried about our jobs and if we can consume products. So anytime spirituality comes up, it's it's marginalized or crushed. You know, the the hippie movement, for instance, here's a great example. Here are these kids coming along who are rebelling against conformity, which every generation does. Everyone but this does. one was a little they bit were a little more, more vocal, a little bit more scary because there was a, a Vietnam War, there was civil rights, there was you know there's a lot of stuff going on in the 60s, yeah. right? Yeah. So what does the, our government do? And this is their you know this is I'm not making this up. They had a guy from the CIA pretend he was an acid dealer, 
grew a ponytail, moved to hate Ashbury, and was giving out thousands. It's on record. You could find this. Dulles ordered millions of doses of CI of, of LSD to distribute among the hippies because he thought it would just make them all crazy. Well, and, but it backfired. It made them like you know respect nature more and, and it's like it, it, and but they literally right. it's, there's a book called acid dreams well they tested it on somebody the well, CIA they tested did. it on their own people and the guy they jumped out a window or well, something well they threw him out a window he's the first yeah. chapter of my other book dead wrong frank olson they threw an him american out. hero who was appalled at interrogation techniques he he found uh, um that we were using um Poison in North Korea that was against the Nuremberg uh, protocols. He saw interrogation techniques that were repellent to him. He was going to leave the agency. What happens is somebody visits him, and they do to him what he was appalled about. And out they slipped him LSD. They hit him out over the head, and they threw him out this window, which was plate glass. Impossible. He would have had to run. 50 yards to build up, the, you know, they at 100 miles an hour. The, right? the manager of the hotel said that, you know, that's, a, you know, there was a, a blackout curtain, too thick. plate yeah. glass. There was a bathtub next to the window. So it was impossible. He was thrown through the window and uh, because he was appalled. And you know what's scary right now, George? Barack Obama is going after whistleblowers more than any other president. Why? I <laughs> why? I don't know. I mean, every, in everything, and he seems... still he could still render. They could still, when you leave this building, they could put a hood over your head and disappear you. I wouldn't they, be on the no. They could do that. Don't, don't give them any ideas. No, I'm hip. I'm just yeah. saying. Well, we're too famous. They won't do that to us. But they can do it. So what happened? You know, and here's another major thing that just came out: five hundred and what thirty six page report bipartisan, which is interesting, saying and using the word torture over and over again that we tortured people. And, you know, so that means that George Bush, Donald Rumsfeld, Condoleezza Rice, Dick Cheney committed treason. They they, they lied us into a work in the Nuremberg trials. Mm -hmm. Part of the thing was the greatest crime a country can commit is to start an unprovoked war against another sovereign right. nation. And we did it. And we all, everybody knows it. And now it's official, bipartisan. Do you hear about it in the news? And it's still Did you hear us. about this story? No. Shouldn't that be blaring headlines? Yep. No. And, and also, Obama is, is committing treason by continuing these illegal activities. I mean, Bush made lawyers bend into pretzels to change, somehow find loopholes in the Geneva Convention? I mean, come on. Even George Washington would kill any of his soldiers who, who tortured any British prisoner. So are you, are you saying that distrust in direction of government is it's probably healthy, healthy and, the, and, unfortunately, and necessary? Right it now. doesn't mean that the truth isn't out there. It just means that you cannot trust one source like but know, it doesn't if, mean also there's a conspiracy under every rock here's here's an example well, i mean i i am strongly convinced yes sir that those two bombers in boston yes m worked with each other maybe got some help from some people who taught them about bombs and stuff but i don't think the government did this i think these were two whacked out kids and they did this heinous thing but there are some people out there richard maybe you i don't know who are convinced that it's a setup. Here's what's suspicious about this. Uh, there are these two Chechen kids. Now, Chechnya is a mostly Muslim country, mm -hmm. and they are a rebel state who tried to secede from the rest of from, from the Soviets. The Soviet. and they did, and the Russians and, fight with and them. And we championed, you know, John McCain went on the floor of the Senate and extolled these Chechen, you know, they're, they're murderous thugs, okay? But for some reason, uh, people in our government were championing them because they were standing up against the Soviet Union. Right. Now, people don't know, but we recruited 
Chechen fighters. They were in Iraq. They were, you know, we, we used the Chechens a, as cutouts, as mercenaries. And Afghanistan. Yeah. So, um, first of all, these two kids, um, these types of bombs, you, you have to test them. I don't do not believe that they just planted it one time and got lucky and did it. So they they had to prepare somewhere. I don't believe they did it alone. This term of self radicalization smacks to me of Orwellian, uh, you know, newspeak where you I, I know, think peace is made war them. and uh, I, this is very fishy because as you recall, they said they had the guy. And the press came to where they had him, and then they made the press go away. And that was the nude guy. Yeah. Said, right? Well, who, Whoever why would, he was. Wouldn't? Why would they say to the press, "We got him," and then say, "We don't have him"? It's very, you know. I don't. I understand why people are questioning this story. Oh, I, understand. I don't know who did it, but these kids did not do it by themselves. I do not believe. Um, my nickname them. Um, Lee and Harvey Oswaldovich brothers. They could be patsies, not necessarily for our government, but they could have been stooges for some terrorist organization or elements, you know, in this country who want to do us harm. I don't think the government has an institution per se, but George, there are elements within our government that are capable of some dark stuff. Oh, I, I agree with Very that. dark I stuff. I agree with that. But I mean, the and kid, then the, the rest of the government's caught and has to cover it up, even though they didn't perpetrate yeah, it. I mean, but the kid's basically admitting in, in the That's, hospital. He's got a bullet in his neck. You, yeah. you, I don't believe one word they say he's saying. But you don't, you don't discount the fact that maybe they did do it. No, they, maybe they did. But they, I, they didn't do it by themselves. Well, I don't think they did because either. you can't. Those bombs need to be tested. I think somebody made the bombs for them. I yeah, think so. They, there's, I, I think they were mules. There's more people involved. Let's say yeah. at the very least, yeah. and the fact that they're Chechen, and, and another thing that's fishy is they're rolling out, and it's incredibly irresponsible of the press at the beginning of this. Wolf Blitzer, for instance, saying, "Were there any um, uh, Tea Party people? That, you know, are there any patriot? You know, like." Are there any Martians there? I mean, I'm not a big fan of the Tea Party, but you you don't say something like that without cooperation. Sure. He, so he's tying together a group with this horrific event. That's incredibly irresponsible journalism. Would it surprise you if the Russians rolled back into Chechnya now? And the started, Russians and made it the known fight? to us. They warned us about this kid yes. a while back. A couple and times. But that's their way. Of letting people know, you know, this is your guy, man. Yeah. You know, they're, they're we pe- told you. Well, no, well, people are trying to say, well, that maybe when they were in Russia, they were trained. No, the Russians are telling us, like they did with Oswald and these other fake defectors. The Russians, you know, they're not. You know, I'm not a big fan, but they're not stupid, and they're they're cover- they're saying, look, this is your guy. That's why it's fishy to me. Well, it is. Strange. Why would the Russians be yeah. warning us about some young kid? Why? A year before it happened. Why? It's just a rhetorical yeah. question. It's very fishy. All right. Back to uh, back to Kennedy. Back yes. to your work hit list. When, yes. when I was younger, I kept hearing strange stories that witnesses were dying. Ah. I learned at a young age, Richard, wow. that there are no coincidences, that things generally happen for a reason. Yeah, I learned that very early, too, but not as early as you. These witnesses that started dying or disappearing. Right. Were they people who were at the scene when Kennedy got assassinated, or were they government people? Who were they? They were CIA people, FBI people, newspaper reporters, uh, doctors. Um, who people. have died? They were murdered suspiciously. Uh, mob guys who were you know just about to testify murdered. Uh, William Sullivan, FBI director was talking a little bit too much. He was shot by a state trooper, a a chief of the state trooper's son, thought he was a deer. The guy's on his porch. There were two newspaper reporters. And when you kill reporters, it's serious. There were two newspaper reporters who were uh, in Dallas at a 
an apartment where the murder was discussed bef- prior to the assassination. Okay. One of them came home one day and was surprised by a burglar who killed him. The other one was shot by accident. Two, they murdered two reporters who had foreknowledge. Um, uh, people you know, were hung in jail cells. Dorothy Kilgallen, a really good reporter. She was on What's My Line, right. but she was a really good reporter. She wasn't just a TV personality. She was a hard news. And had a lot of clout. In had a lot of clout. She's like a, an, 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 like a great, great. Um, she was like Walter Winchell of, of the yeah, press. Yeah, but he right? was a fascist. She was. Uh, <laughs> no, really. He was. He was a terrible, terrible guy. He had people beat up. He was a... Uh, Winchell did? Oh, yeah. He, All right, he that's another story. Barry Gray, the, you know Barry Gray? Yeah. The, Winchell almost had him beat to death, but that's another story. Anyway, um, Dorothy Kilgallen was the only reporter to get Jack Ruby alone for a while. That's right. And she told her agent, her best friend, and a couple other people that she's going to blow the lid off this case. And we never, heard, we never heard what happened, did we? Well, she was murdered. She They found her in yeah. bed in her apartment. Not her bed, a guest room bed, which she never slept in. All her makeup's on. She has a book on her that she already read. Her eyeglasses are nowhere to be found. And tell me, her notes she, are gone, right? Her notes are gone. Her, and they say she died of barbiturate and alcohol. She took too many sleeping pills. They found three different kind of barbiturates inside her. The two others she didn't have access to. Next day, her friend who she told about it, dead. Everyone who she Whoa. told, dead. All her notes, gone. She had said before she died, J. Edgar Hoover would be better served finding out who killed our president than harassing me. Interesting. Uh, but, I mean, uh, That's so scary. It's very scary. And there's other people who, you know, we have 50 names in there. And we did the thing I love about my partner, David Wayne, he's a micro analyst of how the media what, covers or, events. What are the odds? What are the odds of these people dying this way? Well, that's a good question. You talk about coincidence. I bet it's astronomical. Yeah, well, the, the uh, London Times hired a mathematician to do the actuary. Okay. And But we, we keep changing it because in the first 18 months after the murder of John Kennedy, there were a certain amount of deaths, okay? So the odds, some of them were... You know, like some were gunshots, some were car accidents. Two were natural causes. The others were strange. You know, like and, one, and one two, car accident, electrocution. No witnesses slit throat, to them. All yeah. that. So the odds of those people dying in that period of amount of time, I believe in, in the first one was like 100,000 trillion <laughs> to one. Richard, we're going to take this break. We're going to come back more with Richard Belzer as we talk about Hit List on Coast to Coast AM. And those of you calling now, we'll take your calls next hour with Richard Belzer. Richard, you're talking about the probability of these witnesses dying in the early stages of the JFK assassination. Mm-hmm. And a mathematician ran some numbers astronomical. Well, the number I quoted was just after the first 18 months. But when you get into the, if you go on in time in the 70s when they had the uh, congressional hearings on assassination and uh, other mm-hmm. witnesses started dying. So it, see, the number's even bigger. It's like, you know, it's it's a number you can't even, there's not that many zeros. So, wh- so if there's, excuse me, George. Go ahead. If there is no conspiracy, why are all these people being murdered or dying mysteriously just before they're going to testify? Or they said something, you know, like one of Jack Ruby's employees was found hung in a jail cell because she, you know, saw Ruby with, some, you know what I mean? It's like... There's just too many. If it was just one or two people or three people, you know, people do die of natural causes and some people do get in freak accidents. But when you're getting up into these numbers and they're all related in some way to the assassination, then that has to set off alarm bells. That alone proves there's a conspiracy. I mean, we don't know every and we know pretty now we know who the plotters were. They're all dead. So we can name them. And, uh, you know, the, the shooters are maybe couple in jail that we know about but you know there's no reason to keep this story o- away from the public anymore americans have seen a lot they've been through a lot they can handle it and they have a right to know what happened a man died that day people seem to forget this 
and they talk about conspiracy and revisions of history. And here's a man who wanted, he had the first nuclear test ban treaty with the Russians. He wanted to skim the oil depletion allowance because these right wing, not because they're right wing, but because they're making billions of dollars and you want to have some of that money, tax them a little bit, right. put it in the treasury. He wanted to end the Federal Reserve System and have Congress determine. That could have been the big one. Well, that's, some people think that alone. But also, you know, he had Martin Luther King in the White House. The first reports of after the murder, some people thought it was white racists that killed him. They hated him. The Cuban exiles, the mob, elements within the CIA, within the FBI, uh, among the the military elite, we even and heard- on and on and on. So once in a while, these people have a common interest, and they said, this guy's got to go. I mean, it wasn't the government as an institution, but the government as an institution had to cover it up. There were even rumors that Aristotle Onassis wanted to do him in just so he could well, he hated be them, out with but, Jackie, right? Well, now, yeah, I mean, there's some... There, an interesting fact about Onassis is that a man who got money, uh, a man who gave money to Sirhan Sirhan, got money from Onassis. That's strange. Yeah, but it, that's another whole uh, other. That's, that's true, so, but it's a whole other. So what these is, what were they trying to cover up? The fact who? that these, these... In the murder? The, yeah, these well, conspirators. The, well, the, the thing is, what happened is the president is shot. In broad daylight, right? Now, so people in the government who weren't in on it go, holy cow. You know, I'm sure they used other expletives, yeah. but they went, wait, oh, they they did it. You know, because there was rumors floating uh-huh. around. There was even a, a a unit that was sent to try and prevent it. I mean, this was. Oh, really? Yeah. So, but they well, were. They didn't do a good job. Well, it's not their fault because, you know, this thing was. They were going to try to shoot him in Chicago, but they we found out about it and they aborted it. They were going to shoot him in Florida, but they aborted it, but they got him in Dallas. Windows were open all over Dealey Plaza. You know, he was. We, you or I could have shot him that day. You know, I mean, he was wide open. The reason that. So the government, people in the government who weren't involved go, holy mackerel, what are we going to do? So they had to start covering it up out of institutional embarrassment. So people in the CIA who weren't in on it knew the guys in the CIA who were, and they had to help. And the even, you know, like uh, every department of the government had to, the press had to cover it up because they, they you know, they thought they're being patriotic. I think initially a lot of people for patriotic reasons covered it up that it was a conspiracy because they didn't want you know, as I said before, the Russians or the Red Chinese to think, you know, that we're a uh, banana republic. And right. we're, just we're out of control. That, I understand that. But it's 50 years now. Yeah. There's no reason, you know, because all the plotters are dead. And most people And we believe, know who they are. And most people believe there was a conspiracy. Ninety percent of the people in this country believe there was a conspiracy to kill President Kennedy. The other 10 percent work for the government or the media. At the time, <laughs> in 63, yes, sir. if they came public. And said that rogue elements of government killed John F. Kennedy. Do you think we could have had riots that something dangerously disastrous would have happened? Um, that's a very good question. I do not think there would be riots. I think that, see, there's such, you know, the only thing you could think of is like Pearl Harbor, the death of FDR. I mean, what other precedent? You know what I mean? It's hard to know how people would have reacted. But I will say this. The Zapruder film was not shown to the American public for 13 years. That's true. If that film was seen the day after the murder, there'd be, you know, there would be outrage. There would be clearly, you know, back into the left, back into the left. Clearly, he was shot from the front unless Newtonian physics was suspended that day, you know. And clearly, he was shot by more than one weapon because he had a tiny hole in his back, a tiny hole in his throat. And then his head explodes. That was a frangible bullet. It was a different type of weapon. And, you know, there's this big argument about how many shots were fired. Some people heard three shots and two were too close together to be from the Carcano. Some people may have heard four, you know, they're arguing. But there could have been 20 shots if they had silencers. No one ever talks about that. I think I'm, the, I'm not bragging, but all these researchers, no one's ever thought of, yeah, there could have been silencers because we know that there was clearly more than one shooter. Wasn't there later a House Select Committee which concluded that there was, there conspiracy. was a conspiracy? Yeah, then they gavel, yeah. and no indictments were handed. Nothing. That, 
Well, that was the the hearing where Roselli and Giancana were all these people were being murdered. So the congressmen were less scared out of their wits because every time they call someone to testify, they'd be whacked. And then they proved acoustically that you know there was, and they they ruled there was a a conspiracy, and then gaveled it. And you hear nothing more about it. If there's a conspiracy, where are the indictments? Where's the the Justice Department going further investigating because it would have uncovered this massive, massive thing that went throughout the government and would be incredibly humiliating for us in the world stage. Do you think Hoover was part of it? Hoover had foreknowledge of it, certainly, uh, you know, was in on it. Uh, I think uh, Johnson had foreknowledge. Some people have written books saying Johnson ordered it. I do not believe that. I believe he was told and before or after before i mean he there's a photograph of of his his car at the moment kennedy shot and he's nowhere to be seen johnson he ducked he didn't protect anyone else in the car he didn't say anything he just cuz he knew now was he ducking before the shooting well some people i i don't know but there are some people who say that he ducked just before that shot some people say he ducked in reaction to hearing the uh, shot. So that's uh, all right. But that doesn't matter. There's a million other things proving sure. conspiracy. But that's just a curious thing of, you know, where was Lyndon? Yeah. He was, you know, looking for his cufflink. I mean, really. Heck, I would have thrown myself over my wife. Exactly. Wouldn't and you? that's yeah. the, precisely as I did once in an earthquake, by the way, my, <laughs> um, to my wife, not yours. But um, like, for instance, in, in the president's car, the the driver, the Secret Service agent in the passenger seat in the front should have dove over the seat onto the president and he didn't what does the driver do he slows Slows down down. some people say he stopped right some people say definitely slowed down and you see him turning looking watching the head explode and then driving off i mean (laughs) please i've read the ci of the and they're trained the secret service manual i read at from that period and it says if a if a shot is fired, you are you floor it. You get out of there. If your tires are shot out, you floor it. If you're you know, you just uh, instinctively are trained. Go, go, and the sh- car should never be going eleven miles an hour. It should never make that big turn. Um, presidential cars are supposed to go forty four miles an hour, and if they're in a parade route, it's got to be straight line, and it's got to be windows shut everywhere. And there, there was an army unit that usually goes where the president goes to do backup. They were told to stand mm-hmm. down. And what about the Secret Service guys who were supposed to be running alongside the car? Weren't they told to, kind of like, get out of the way or something like that? There's a very curious uh, piece of footage of a the director, the head of the Secret Service, who's in the follow-up car. There's an agent who was going over to the president's car to get on the running board and, you know, protect the president, and he's waved off. And this is on YouTube if you want to see it. And you see the agent with his hands out going like, what? He is perplexed. Why? You know, now I've been told the explanation for that is that some agents were supposed to just be in uh, in Houston and some in, you know, like it was, it's a very fishy explanation Mm -hmm. why. He was waved off. But the only guy who sprung into action that day was Clint Hill, who Jackie Kennedy, Mrs. Kennedy, insisted that was her guy. He's the only one that reacted. Everybody, all the other guys didn't do anything because they knew what was going to happen. Unbelievable. It's Yeah, it's heartbreaking. We lost something that day, Richard. Well, we lost a man who really wanted world peace, who really wanted integration, who really wanted... He did a, a speech about... Social Security and how an elderly person, you know, in those days, if your son made a certain amount of money, the the old the elderly parent couldn't get benefits. I didn't know that. Kennedy yeah. wanted change that. Change that. Is this not fair to a, a son who is working and has a family to have to be responsible for his parent who may need? You know, he was about helping the disenfranchised while still being. You know, a free enterprise. You know, you can do that. You you know, this obsession with, you know, everyone's an entrepreneur and it's all about business. And no, I mean, most people in this country don't own their own business. But, you know, the the, the, if Mussolini defined fascism as 
corporatism. In other words, the government is for the corporation, not the individual. And the technical definition of fascism is, I dare say, what's at work in our government right now. Yeah. Every Supreme Court decision since this Roberts Court with Scalia and, and Clarence and these other people, every decision when there's a, a corporation against an individual, the corporation wins. If there's a landlord against a tenant, All the, time. the landlord All the wins. Time. It's, just, it's just unbelievable how the, the Supreme Court has become politicized, which it clearly wasn't supposed to be. It's supposed to be checks and balances. But look, they, I mean, they threw the election for George Bush, the first time, I mean, people say, you know, he won the election, yeah, by uh, five to four. <laughs> you know, the, well, since when does the Supreme Court interfere and stop people from voting? And, you know, in that ruling, by the way, George, it says this is a one time only first time in the history of the Supreme Court that the language of the law was clearly stating this is just for this election. Right. Right. I mean, There's no precedent. How fishy yeah. can you be? Strange. Well, when you were doing the work with David Wayne. Yes, what, brilliant man. What was the main fact, if any, that just shocked the heck out of you? Well, the 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 arrogance and the well, there's a lot of things, but the thing that that is interesting to us is that in the, in the early 60s when this happened and then in the 70s when they had the you know the committees reexamining at the church committee and the assassination, um, the review and everything, um, what happened was just the amount of information that came out. When any like a smart high school kid, if he just looked at it all, would say, "Of course, this is, it's incontestable." All the people on the committee, the congressional committee investigating the assassination of Kennedy and King. In the 70s, every single person just knew there was a conspiracy. I mean, Gaetan Fonzi, who was a, an investigator, uh, we lost him this year, by the way, a huge loss. He wrote the greatest book ever on the assassination. It's called The Last Investigation, and it was about the House Select Committee on Assassinations. He was an investigator who... He had the evidence. He saw he it all. It. He, he went into Arlen Specter's office with a sport jacket and put it on the desk and said, show me how. Because, you know, when Kennedy was shot, the, the bullet went five and three eighths or five and three quarters inches down from the neck. OK, the Warren Commission said it was in his neck. Mm -hmm. All right. No, it was way below there. Uh, the death certificate signed by Dr. Berkeley, who is Kennedy's physician, places the wound at, at the spot where it really was, where it was in the jacket. Now, here's what's interesting. This is another thing that proves um, something. The jacket and the shirt that Kennedy was wearing have a hole in the exact same spot. Now, three things. One, Kennedy was one of the most well-tailored president. He didn't buy suits off the rack. That's right. Two, he had a back brace on. So that shirt was tight. Mm -hmm. That jacket was tight. And they say, oh, he was waving or turning and the jacket bunched up. It would have had to have bunched up like, you know, like and go above up. his neck and go like this and be like that. There's no photographs. You know, that's physically impossible for that to happen. If it did happen, there'd be two holes in the jacket and two holes in the shirt and they wouldn't be lined up if it doubled over. So right there, you know that there was more than one shooter and that Oswald didn't shoot. And one day uh, I was interviewing um, a Time Magazine reporter about a book he wrote about comedy at the 92nd Street Y in Manhattan. And, there, and as I'm coming in to my event, who comes walking out of another event? Arlen Specter. There he was. And I just went over to, I not, you went for didn't it. attack him. Yeah. I said, I'll give you a million dollars. Did he know who you were? He didn't act like he did, but you never who know. Knows? You right. never know. I, I don't care. Um, I said, I'll give you a million dollars if you can explain to me. No, at first I said, you remember Gaetan Fonz? Oh, yes, my investigator. I said, do you remember when he came into your office? <laughs> and, you know, and he's like, he really was like. He kind uh, of recoiled. He became right? Ralph Crandon. Hamana, 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 hamana. Yeah. 
And, you know, he was astounded that I would be so bold. I, I was very bold, but I was very respectful. I mean, there was a time reporter there. Robert Klein, the comedian, was there. He was trying to pull me off, yeah, you know. Yeah. But I, I just said, I'll give you a million dollars if you can show me how you determined that the bullet went through without causing more than one hole if the jacket did, in fact, bunch up. And he was like, he could not believe that someone would do that to him. After it was like this, years, too. this kind of, you know, I don't want to say arrogance, but it was like, how dare, who is this, you know, like, and then he said, uh, my, his wife's ill and he had to go and his aide kind of, but. And they ran away from you. He did run away from me. Maybe his wife was, I said, you know, I, I'm so sorry to hear that, Senator, and I hope your wife feels better. And I certainly hope that you think about what I said. Please. But he won't, and he didn't, and, you know, he was ordered by Dulles to come up with this single bullet theory because the first shot missed, and if you have, how do you miss a giant car? And the first shot was a signal to the other shooters. It hit the curb and hit uh, James Tag in the cheek, it blood, so they said, oh, now we only have two bullets left. And then we have a photograph huh. of another person finding a whole bullet in the ground, not the one that hit Tag. There's another whole bullet. And we have photos of a guy picking it up, and that disappeared. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. it's all there. And finally, the reason I wrote this book about the the witnesses being dying mysteriously is because it be, proves, to use a legal term, beyond a shadow of a doubt, beyond reasonable doubt, that there was a conspiracy to murder the president. Otherwise, there would be no... Reason, rhyme or reason for all these people to have died in and around key events related to the assassination. Uh, and I was going to say, the, the, the witnesses who all died, yes. did they see something so out of the ordinary that well, they could have destroyed the theory? Well, I mean, Walter Sullivan, head of the FBI, was just talking. You know, he was overheard by several people talking a little bit too much. You know, like, like it was no, like it wasn't like happened. nobody, you know, like Dan Rather didn't, no reporter saw the assassination, but they appropriated Tom Wicker, Dan Rather, uh, they appropriated the story, but they haven't investigated it in 50 years. Okay, next hour will be the magical hour. We'll take your phone calls with Richard Belzer as we talk about conspiracies and his latest work, Hitless. The book's out, and I'm holding it right now. Can people get it? Hit list is available everywhere. It's in the history section, which I'm very proud of. It's not being marginalized, but you can get it on Amazon or from um, Alex Jones's Infowars. He's been kind enough to sell the book, right. as well as uh, any any anywhere books are available. You sign mine, so I might put Barnes it on and eBay. And you can get money. Out yeah, there, you huh? get it. What does this tell us about the direction we're going, and are we salvageable as a people? I, I believe I'm I'm a uh, cynical optimist I guess um, I believe that knowledge is power and as our founders uh, with all their faults did have some brilliant insights into uh, an informed citizenry that was very important to people like Adams and Jefferson uh, about that the public should have be informed and have knowledge and that that way they could choose their leaders now you know it's like almost a joke how the same people get reelected and mm -hmm. you know a senator from a state with you know three people in it has the same power as a senator from new york or california it's insane <laughs> you know you, a lot of these people just, who are senators in in states where they only need to get you know three or four hundred thousand votes to win they are determining the lives of the other 310 million people in That's America. John Kennedy made uh, I, re I listened to all his speeches. And in one of his speeches, which blew my mind because it's so topical, he said, um, President Truman said that there is about 14 million people in America who are represented in Washington, you know, by lobbyists or whatever. And, and John Kennedy said, I represent the other 200 and whatever the pot, you know, the other 250 million people. In other words, he said, you know, people want the president just to be a ceremonial head. And that's then get yourself another president. I'm here to represent, you know, it was an amazing yeah. speech. 
just calling oh, he out was phenomenal calling out the other side but you know i i um i'm respecting him more and more as i learn more and more about what he was up against on the inside how he was lied to by generals and how they try to sabotage things and embarrass him and and float false rumors and you know but he he got it you know he grew in office pretty quickly you know in a thousand days he went from you know the naive rich uh well-meaning guy to a you know a really hard-nosed brilliant um uh geopolitical thinker why aren't we trading with cuba we trade with communist china that has run over people with tanks yeah we contained the soviet union we contained china and yet we are, you know, embargoing I don't Cuba. understand. You can't so, get a Cuban cigar. It, Not that I smoke. Well, but. John John got them. Um, and Milton Berle gave me one. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah, I was at the car. But, I mean, it's ludicrous. With, isn't well, it? it's, it's so ludicrous that I really have yet to hear a reasonable explanation how and why this keeps going. And nobody brings it up. And it's so unfair. I have Cuban friends. Whose family, who you know, nice people who happen to be successful. Not every rich person's bad, right. and they're successful where here? No, in Cuba. In Cuba, and they had to flee because they, you know, Castro was taking, right. you know. So I mean, um, the the thing about Cuba is totally mystifying to me. Castro changed. Totally I mean, mystifying. This is what happened, as you as you know. Batista was a criminal. Oh yeah, he was. He was killing people. Well, he, he was, allowed. He was. You know, he allowed crooks. Gun in, running and gun running and, and the mob. That's what Ruby was involved. He was in. getting paid from by the mob for yeah, the casino. No, he was. Yeah. He was. Bad. So getting him out, Castro's revolution. The people just loved Castro, right? And Guevara, right? I mean, they wanted well, this to happen, right. but apparently the supporters of Castro, those people who ended up leaving Cuba, fleeing, going to Miami. They realized that as soon you mean the supporters of Batista. No, they so oh, Castro. They, they, they were the, those who were supporting Castro ended up leaving too. Oh, fleeing, yes, when because he, of when, him. Because he started taking over yeah. uh, companies yeah, and, yeah. and land, and, right. and worked out things with the Soviets. We had a moment. They there. got out of there. We lost that moment. The Soviets offered to pay all his bills. Yeah, we lost that split second where he he flipped. But and I some, mean, he brought Cuba education, free medicine. He did some incredible things when but, he came in. Yeah, but a lot of women in Cuba are forced into prostitution. Women who would not normally do it. Because of him? Because of the economic conditions there. And yeah. they have political prisoners there. And there's dark stuff going on. I mean, on. is he even aware of what's going on? Well, he was, his brother he was up until very recently. I mean, Castro is one of those, you know, brilliant, evil people. Yeah. who managed to survive all this time for some who knows what reason. I mean, so evil, we could blow somebody out of a chair from a helicopter, you know what yeah. I mean, if we wanted to. If we wanted and, to. And they did try to kill him. Many it, times. And it's funny because there was talk of creating a holographic, this is true, a holographic 300-foot Christ to appear in Cuba and, <laughs> and and have the people, you know, turn against Castro. Yeah. They were going to put poison, poison him. in a conch shell that would explode when he went scuba diving. Yeah. They put LSD on his scuba gear. There was a woman who was hired to kill him, his, who was one of his mistresses. And one day he's in bed with his hands behind his back, you know, like this. And he goes, they uh, sent you to kill me, right? Oh, he knew? He knew, and she was, like, busted. That was it. And uh, he didn't well, kill her. Had her thrown out, but, though, I'm sure. Well, I mean, yeah, but Eventually. I'm just saying he he, is, he was no dummy. No. And he, he was, certainly he, wasn't. He can't be a dummy. To certainly survive. didn't kill President Kennedy, which some people say, oh, Castro. Castro wanted, as a matter of fact, the day the president was murdered, there was a Swiss diplomat in Cuba trying to smooth things out because Kennedy wanted that over. He wanted that over. He wanted to get out of Vietnam. I mean, he wanted to do all the things that Eisenhower, he, he Eisenhower warned us. Kennedy realized what Eisenhower was saying about the military industrial yeah. complex. Key word in that speech, by the way, which a lot of people, you know, a lot of people quote that line, the military industrial complex. But if you read the whole speech, President Eisenhower also said it could affect us spiritually. That's right. He used that word. For him to use yeah. that word, you know, a soldier who saw yeah. World War II, he, 
he was scared yeah. because they sabotaged, you know, they, they, they sabotaged the U-2 flight so that Khrushchev and Eisenhower couldn't, Eisenhower wanted to go out of his presidency as a world peacemaker. So, and Khrushchev did too. So they're going to meet in England with Macmillan and have this world summit crowning achievement of Eisenhower's career. He tells the Pentagon, stand down all U-2 flights. Mm -hmm. And and a U two flight was and, and Gary so, Powers gets nailed. Yeah. Right? So, but then they asked Dulles at a Senate hearing how the president, the commander in chief, gave an order. Who can overrule the president? So Dulles says, "We we had a group, and there was no follow up question. No, there was no group. It was Dulles. we had a group. Dulles was no, no. Control. There is a group. It's a national security agency. Presidents are part time workers. There is a group. Presidents can only do so much." That's, it's or still, that's still, their still the case. Yeah, well, still, yeah. Still Every president since Kennedy they probably take him in. Alex room. Jones calls them all puppets. They're, they're, I, yeah, puppets and part-time workers, yeah. yeah. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Nori with you. We'll take your calls in just a moment with Richard Belzer. You know, Richard, after reading the book, The Hit List, yes. I'm kind of glad I wasn't a witness to the Kennedy ah, assassination. Or, or overheard something. Unbelievable how this is happening. I mean, and a lot of these people, other than being in the wrong place at the wrong time, they didn't have anything to do with it. They just, they were there. They saw things. They were witnesses. Well, they, they heard something before the assassination, and then they talked about it. Or after the fact, I mean, officials were murdered. A former uh, CIA guy was, was murdered. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of chilling that these high-profile murders happened. And it's just, you know, we just keep going along. Like, uh, people don't want to wrap their head around the fact that the government may be involved in these things. And I understand that because, you know, you, your parents, your religion, your government, you know, we were brought up to respect these institutions. Absolutely. And they're all falling apart, you know, in the last there would be no, 10, no 20 way. years. My, my late father, there would be no way that he would believe that government would be capable of doing any of this. I know. I'm, and a lot of they people t it. today can't. And and it's not because they're stupid. It's just that there's a psychological thing that happens uh, that I found. I've spoken to really, really smart people, I mean, who just can't go there. They can't go beyond a certain. And it's interesting. You think, well, if somebody's very intelligent and you show them a fact, mm -hmm. they would understand and believe it. But no. They won't take it. It's something that there's an emotional element to certain information that people cannot compute well, and there's a big difference between love of country and distrust of government. And that's what I think a lot of people can't separate the two. They think that if you criticize government, yeah, that's a you, good point. you hate the country. No. That's not the case. No, I'm disappointed in the country. I know a true patriot protects its country against the government. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's Absolutely. like, uh, I'm not saying overthrow the government, but the system of only... Two parties, the 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 uh, the republicrats, they're both owned by the same people. It, in Europe, you know, they have 14, 15 parties. In the primaries, people get out, vent, and they'll vi vote for some extreme thing to make a point, and then it settles down, and then they vote. Do you know what I mean? We can't – there should be like five different aspects of the Republican Party. There should be fiscal, religious, uh, team, whatever. There should be a Green Party, a Labor Party, a – you know, different yeah. permutations of the right and left and, and give people choices. But we have we that's why a lot of people feel they, they can't have an effect and don't vote because they, they know that these guys are bought and sold and most of them, you know, don't have their interests at heart. See, I would have wanted, if, had I been president one day. Yes. God forbid. The, uh, no, you would be fine. You know, I would have wanted my cabinet to be the best people. I don't care what. The best and brightest. That's right. I don't care what party they were from. I don't care whether they were libertarians, independents, Republicans, Democrats. I want the best people. Yeah, Abe Lincoln, team of rivals. He hired people that are and that John were, Kennedy that were had, better than him. And Kennedy had Republicans in his people of like mind have appropriated a whole political party and can determine uh, things that most people don't want. It's a you know our, our system is broken in America. Sadly, sadly. Stephen Eugene, Oregon. It's your turn. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, hi, George and Richard, and pleasure. Hi. And George, uh, Richard, I'm looking forward to getting your book and reading it. Oh, I thank you. you on 
all your efforts to bring out even more information and truth about the JFK assassination. Thank you. And I think if this nation ever wakes up and really uh, gets this as a center stage, it could bring down this house of cards and shadow government and change us back to what we used to be. But what I wanted to talk about was uh, kind of interesting about the the witnesses that um, died either mysteriously yeah. or outright murder. Right. Um, I have a situation, and I'll tell it quick, quite quickly. Sure. I have a dear friend of mine who uh, is an upstanding, uh, well-to-do lady. She's in her 80s now, and... Um, I was visiting her back in the early 80s, and I don't know, the JFK assassination came up, and she goes, you know, I've never told anybody this before, but she says, I'm going to tell you. She says, I'm still scared to death about it. Anyway, she and her husband were living in New Orleans back in the 50s, late 50s. Right. Moved to Southern California in 62, and their neighbors in New Orleans are their best friends. Um, one was an ex-UDT member of the, in the Navy. You know, now it's the SEALs. Right. And he had... Uh, joined the CIA and underwater demolition team, right? But yeah. then, when he had the Navy, apparently he went into the CIA, and this is in the late fifties, right? 60s. And he was gone quite a bit. But they were best friends; they would party together and have dinner together and all that. Anyway, she moved to Southern California with her husband. They had some kids, and they still kept in touch with this couple, and, right? And this guy. So the assassination happened. Um, Anyway, she was upset about that, and a few days later, after the assassination, she had a knock on the door in the late afternoon, and here was her friend, the, the, the husband, dis disheveled, distraught, uh, just asking if he could come in and clean up and rest a little bit, and, you know, she yeah. didn't know what the heck was going on, but she said something was really wrong with this guy. Came in and showered. Uh, she got him something to eat. Her husband came home. She was taking care of the kids. Her, her husband talked to him a little bit. And he finally said, hey, I got to go. I got to go. You know, they're, they're after me. And that's all she said he wow. to her. And anyway, uh, she asked her husband, because he had been talking to the husband, and uh, he said, I don't know, man. He's, he's just a mess. He said something about the JFK assassination and people. What year was him. this? this? This was right after the assassination. Oh, so he, do you, do you, do you have a name? I don't want to. I'm kind of nervous about this. No, because, you could give me the name off the air, please. Yeah, I can. For my I, reason. Can I, you do that? It, well, anyway, let me finish this. Go quickly. ahead. She she said it was very upsetting. She knew something was wrong. Um, she called his wife, and she didn't know anything about it. She said he had been gone because he would go away for a week, two weeks at a time. And she was just totally upset, and they had no idea what was going on anyway. Um, they said they'd keep in touch and try to find out what was going on. The next morning, her husband went to work. She said uh, mid-afternoon or mid-morning, uh, mid-morning, I guess it was, uh, she got a knock on the door, and there were two black suits there. And she said they scared the holy living. You they know said, what where's the guy? Right? Where's the guy? And she says, I don't know. He was here, and he left. And they, she said, that's why she's, she never told anybody. She said, she I don't was, blame her. She was still scared. Uh, yeah. She said they, Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll be quick. Um, no, you won't. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> but you better be because yeah. the clock's on. Yeah, there. we got she other people her, on. She called her wife, his his wife again, and, and told her what happened. And her wife was just distraught because she hadn't heard from him or anything. Oh, she even the wife didn't know. Yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Out, she said about a week or two later, his wife called him her. And said they found him in a creek in New Orleans drowned. There you go, another death. I'm going to put you on hold, Stephen. If you want to give Tom your phone number for Richard, or, no, or just we'll that name, and, it. and we, you know, we won't say where we got it, it and off because that sounds very, very real. So I'm reading said. the book, yes. and uh, one of the chapters, of course, about Jimmy Hoffa. Oh, and yeah. I don't know if you knew, I was the last reporter to see him alive in really? July of 1990. 1975. Where in, were you? In, in Detroit? Detroit. Yeah, absolutely. And so walking him to his car after he was on our television show. Are you serious? Yeah. Telling now, me that he wanted to get back into the union, that, you know, he didn't care about the deal he cut to get out of prison. Yeah. He wanted back in. I never talked to him about Kennedy. Of course not. But, you know, he, he, he wanted back in. And then in a week or so, he was gone. Oh, yeah. Um, what was this? I'm always interested by the local. In other words, in Dallas, people knew a lot of stuff before the rest of the country. Yeah. And so you you saw what was the rumors or what was in the air in Detroit when when he disappeared? 
What were the well, rumors you know, floating the, well, around? Well, we heard the stories that, you know, he was going to meet with uh, a couple mobsters. Yeah, there was and basically, that, that restaurant. In, you know, he wanted their approval to come back and try to get Fitzsimmons back out of the Teamsters Union. Right, he hated Fitzsimmons. And, uh, though he appointed him when he left. No, but he was jealous. Yeah, exactly, because Fitz didn't want to give it up. No. He had the power, and, you know, he was supposed to meet with them. I don't think the gangsters ever showed up at that restaurant. It was the Marcus Red Fox. And uh, somebody showed up. There were rumors that his uh, so called non birth son, Chucky O'Brien, met him and that uh, somebody him drove him somewhere and set him up. Yeah. That was never proven. No, but he, he's not buried in Yankee Stadium. No, or, or, he's not. I think no. he's crunched in some car somewhere that's uh, yeah, in or, some bumper. Or a vat of acid. Yeah. yeah. Um, As a matter of fact, the serial killer that our friend Robert Dobby was in is in his movie, The Iceman right. Cometh, about Richard uh, Kuklinski. Right. Kuklinski claims he's the one who killed Hoffa by stabbing him to death. And then what? And then they put him in, they burned him right. in a bin. Right. And then they took the bin, right. put it in a car, and crunched the car, and yeah. it's in Japan somewhere. Yeah, that I've heard that story in the... Who knows? Totally plausible. Who knows? Richard, we're out of time. I oh, want to really? Thank you. I want to That's apologize to so all the fast. callers that are hanging They're on. still hanging for you. Oh, you know what? Um, the book is called Hit List. Hit List available everywhere. My website, um, ibells.com. I have a talk show on YouTube. Excellent. Richard Belzer's Conversation. You're everywhere. And, uh, and your show on and NBC goes on and on yes, and on. Yes, Law and & Order. And support our vets. Good really. for you. Richard, it's very important. It's always a pleasure George, to see you. George, you're the friend. best. Thank you, you so much. You take care of yourself. Richard Belzer, the name of the book, Hit List. It's a great read, especially about, of course, all the witnesses who disappeared during the JFK assassination case. Truly remarkable.